went forward with on the noise ordinance. And I know a lot of citizens uh, were for the veto, but there's the ones that are living next to music that um, I guess really um, called on you and called on me as well. I personally believe we ought to go back to the ordinance we had before we started changing everything. And basically, you turn the music off at 10 o'clock. If it's after 10 o'clock, you go up and talk to the judge why you can't turn it off. So that's my recommendation to you. But I'd like to uh, let my veto stand. Not to, to override the veto on the noise ordinance, because I do believe that music is a, is a large industry in Fairhope, and we need to rethink how we're doing the noise ordinance. So um, I'm hoping that somebody will do that. To be one of them. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, is, is the noise ordinance. Obviously, we have a problem. It's a problem uh, down uh, at Point Clear. It's a problem elsewhere. The county commission will be dealing with the problem down south of town. I would challenge the mayor or whoever to come up with a, uh, a workable solution. And, and I would like to say, I don't want to close any businesses, and I don't want to do away with any events uh, which make Fairhope a special place. But the decibel level, as the ordinance has now, is not the only component of a noise ordinance. I believe that time and duration must be considered. Most events are at a reasonable time and duration or length. Mardi Gras parades are from 7 to 9, and you have three a year. The Pops on the Bluff are from 6 to 9, and that's four times a year. And we have football here, as the mayor said, and that's about five or six games a year, and they're usually from 7 to 7.30 to 9 o'clock. So the time and duration of the, of, of the noise <laughs> or the problem need to be considered when we're dealing with now compare these events, 15 events a year, time and duration, three or four nights a week from 9 to 11, that's 12 to 16 times a month or about 192 times a year. Now most of us have had an experience of pulling up to a red light and the guy next to you has the boom box in his car. And you can hear it, you can feel it. Well that's an example, it's a short duration. You know it's going to end when the light turns green and it's going to move down the road. Now consider that if the time was from 9 to 1 or 9 to, to, to midnight or whatever it might be. So time and duration of noise is important. In addition, we should consider the precedents that have been set in this city. And all citizens should be created, I mean should be treated equally. The residents of Atlanta and Seacliff have unfairly been labeled as a small minority. But let me give you a couple of examples of precedents in minorities. The North Beach was closed a couple of years ago at dusk because a small minority complained of noise from the boom boxes. And so from a small minority, visitors and citizens were denied use of the duck pond park area. Another example of a precedent, short-term rental was enacted because a small minority didn't want people renting their houses for weddings and visitors from out of town because of the noise, because of the problem. And, and we did enact a short-term rental which eliminated that. And recently, the Fairhope Single Tax Colony offered to put sidewalks in a particular neighborhood but a small minority didn't want it, and they opposed this offer because of the potential noise, and the offer quietly and quickly died. And these are three examples of precedents protecting minority rights. And instead of labeling the residents of Atlanta as complainers, we ought to treat everyone, all citizens, equally, and keep in mind the precedents that we have set. And I ask whoever gets charged with working on a new ordinance, and Mr. Mayor, whether it's at 10 o'clock or whatever it is, consider precedents that we have done, how we've treated citizens, 
and apply that equitably to the noise ordinance and uh, hopefully we can come to a solution. Because as I said, I don't want to do away with special events and I'm not trying to close down any businesses, but that's what I had to say about the noise. Well, yes, yeah, since Dan brought it up, uh, you know, I was looking at the minutes here and of course reading the newspaper, from reading the newspaper, I, I asked one of them, were you at the meeting? Because uh, what came out in the paper was not basically what was said. Uh, you know, we were going to do it for six, six, three, what was it, three or four weeks. The committee was made up of myself and the mayor. Uh, what's your name? Joe. <laughs> and Lonnie. And uh, that was what was uh, figured, you know, was tried for four weeks, didn't work. Try something else until we find the right solution. And I think we can find the right solution. Uh, one of the things that was offered back then was the fact that we just do away with the ordinance all together. And, uh, or go back to the old one and, and pump it up a little bit. Because we heard the attorney say that the only way we could basically get anybody on a noise ordinance was either by letting the complainers come up, I guess going to court, or get put under public nuisance or uh, disturbing the peace because we had to have the decibel levels to enforce the noise on us that we had. Wasn't that correct? I think we need an objective standard, uh, not a subjective standard. Right. Okay. Good. I just want to clear some of that up because I, I, I thought maybe I was at a different meeting than uh, reading the newspaper. That, <laughs> no, I'm not. But anyway, uh, the other thing is just. I do appreciate all the uh, uh, emails that I got, and most every one of them was civil. But I'm getting emails now from different people in the city, and, and uh, the civility has gone almost in the emails, uh, particularly against uh, one of our members here. Uh, and I, I thought it was uh, very crude the way things were put. And just for all you kids out there and ladies, just shut your ears a minute and I'll tell you one of them that I got which stuck out in my mind. See that Debbie wasn't the only one getting picked on that. And, uh, but this is pretty, this is why we all run for office up here. So, boy, are you stupid. Uh, we just read that you suggested banning music outdoors. That was one of the options that we did. You sure are stupid for saying that. Who is up your butt and how much did you get paid? Look forward to a downturn in business because no one will ever recommend someone so short-sighted who wears blinders. You're the back end of a horse. So that, I thought I would keep that one because it, uh, I might be guilty of some of that, but I don't think I'm guilty. <laughs> I'm not guilty of taking any money or the other thing, but I may be somewhat of a horse. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's right. You know, that is sad, Mike, that the level that people have gone to, um, that there's no civility left, uh, it seems, a lot of places. I just want to say it didn't hurt my feelings. It came from a woman. Well, that's who signed it. Uh, I, I would say lady, but I don't think I would be using the right word. <laughs> but uh, it really didn't make me mad, whoever said it. I, I just got a big kick out of them. I said, boy, I'm going to keep that short to my grandchildren someday. So, uh, Anyhow, but we are getting a little bit less civil in what I'm reading recently about different people and, and what they're saying in these emails and all. Uh, and I think we need, that's not, that's not the fail that I remember. The fail that I 